When setting up any plans in Central, it's important to keep this basic structure in mind. Ask yourself, what's the purpose of the plan? And therefore, what plan type should I use? And what sections should it include? And what details should be recorded in those sections? When setting up a PLP or personal learning plan, we're thinking about setting targets for the student and developing strategies to help the student reach those targets. Navigate to Plans and then Plans Setup. Given that our purpose is target and strategy based, we'll ensure that we use the PLP template when setting up a new PLP plan. Plans can be very simple or very detailed. To see the basic structure of any plan, it's helpful to set one up without adding any extra sections so that you can see what's in it already and then decide on how much extra information you'd like to record. Let's do that now. I'll type in New PLP and click Add. It's important to note that this top section is the same for all plan types. Here's the name we just gave to this plan type. Underneath, we need to select the appropriate template. Given this is a PLP, I'll select PLP. Then make selections here as needed. Consider whether you need to add a signature, or whether this plan is confidential, or whether you're going to show it in either the student or parent portal, or whether you need to make this plan hidden from your users for some reason. Remember, you will need to complete this same top section for each plan type that you create. Down the bottom, you can see that I now have the opportunity to add sections. Before we consider adding sections to this plan, let's see what it would look like just as it is for the moment. To do that, I'll have to assign a student to this plan. Search for a student and then click on New PLP, which is the plan type we just created. Again, this information at the top will be the same for each plan that you create. Moving down the page, you can see two other sections which are common to all plans. The Plan Details section includes a creation date, whether there were any people consulted in the creation of this plan, any background and interests that, that may be relevant, and any other additional information. The Plan Resolution section allows for further comments, a review date, and a selection to indicate whether the plan is completed or not. Between these two, you can see the section for adding targets, which is the purpose of a PLP. Let's add one and try the target of Read More Widely. A strategy for that may include something like Limit reading comic books to one per week. I could add more strategies, but we'll leave it at one for this example. In the Evaluation section, we could include something like Keep a list of all the books read and make a note of those that were the most interesting. I could add more targets, but we'll leave it as one for this example. Then click Save. Now you can see that this is the plan at its most basic, but we could add further sections and details. Let's add another section. Going back to Plans Setup, click again on New PLP. It's down the bottom of the list. I'll add a section called Preferred Topics. Now I have the chance to enter relevant details for the section. Click Add Detail. For the name, I'll enter Student Shows Interest In. Then for the type, I'll choose Multiple Selection. Now I can begin to add various options that can be selected by the person completing this plan for the student that could help teachers or learning support staff assist the student in making wider reading choices. Let's try a few. The hamburger icon here allows me to reorder these selections if needed. Now let's see what this looks like. Let's find that student again. Click on New PLP. Moving down the page, I can see the new section for preferred topics, but there aren't any topics shown. To specify those, I'll need to click Edit. Then I can choose the topics that this student prefers. Teachers referring to this plan can then use this information to help the student achieve their target of reading more widely. Now, you'll notice that when I set up the detail for the preferred topics section, that there were several options for the detail type. I chose multiple selection to allow the display of several topics that a student may be interested in but there are other options. I could have selected a text area, single selection, a yes-no response, or yes-no with text area, 
the date, or a table. Each of these options provides a different way to record information for this detail, and of course that will depend very much on the plan type you're creating and what the intended purpose is. Going back one screen, you can see that quite a bit of work has gone into creating just one detail. You can add as many details as you like, and this could indeed make the plan very comprehensive. When creating plan types for your school, you may wish to keep them simple at first, and then add sections and details as necessary.